and welcome to episode number six of what was previously This Week in Webtoon. But now we're pivoting. Okay, we're changing it up. We're rebranding, if you will, and we're going to be calling it The Weekly Ramble. Not me almost forgetting what I was going to call this. It's just a weekly segment, okay? It's unscripted. It's very chill. I'm wearing my pajamas. I actually made myself a tiny pot of tea, which I will be pouring into this cup. And we're just going to chill, okay? We're going to talk about some of my favorite Webtoon series. We're going to talk about Webtoon news and things related to Webtoon. So before I get into some housekeeping here, if you are a fan of Webtoons and Webtoon related content, then please consider subscribing to my channel. Because even though I do take random hiatuses, when I'm not taking a random hiatus, I do make one of these roughly every week. And I also make a lot of other video content here on my YouTube that is related to Webtoons. So I would love to have you here if you would be so inclined to subscribe. That would be awesome. If you're already subscribed, then thank you. I love you. I appreciate you. Like this video. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just can't stop asking for stuff. Okay, let's get some housekeeping out of the way. Like I said at the start, I am renaming this. So this is now episode six of The Weekly Ramble. And long story short, uh, I just don't want like the whole Webtoon brand to be in something, even if it's just a segment on my channel. And it's it's not because I like, I mean, obviously I'm affiliated with Webtoon in a way, like I'm in their ambassador program, which some of you know, but all that really means is I'm in like a little curated group of people who are content creators that also like to focus on Webtoon from time to time. Like, they're not paying me to make my content constantly. These videos are not, like, this specific type of thing I do isn't affiliated with the brand Webtoon. So I didn't want that branding to be even in this small little segment of what I'm doing. It just felt wrong. And on top of that, I didn't really want to be boxed in um, because I kind of realized in recent weeks while I've been going through my yearly annual seasonal depression. Yeah, I work backwards. I get seasonal depression in the spring. Don't ask. I don't know. It's been like this my whole life. <laughs> but during it, I've kind of realized I'm finding a lot of different interests. And of course, we all have different interests. And my main one is Webtoon and always will be. And that's going to be like 95% of probably everything. I should drink some of this. I do like a handful of other things that would be really fun to chat about here on my channel, and I know some of you enjoy too. For one, Has Been Hotel. I've been brain rotted out so hard on Has Been Hotel. The music, the characters, the ships, just, it's exquisite, okay? I would love to come and chat about Has Been Hotel here on my channel, and I realize I can. The only person holding me back is me. So, that was one thing. I'm like, I could come on here and talk about that in my podcast if I want to. Uh, other things, I love Spy Family, right? I think that's pretty well known. I love Chainsaw Man. Um, but back to Spy Family, I might be going to see that movie soon. Maybe I want to talk about that. I don't know. Just That was just a long-winded way of explaining why I changed the name to The Weekly Ramble. <laughs> and I'll have you know, <laughs> that was really hard for me to come up with, even though it's so freaking basic. <laughs> I was like, mm, how about Rosie Bird's Roundup? And then I'm like, that's stupid. And then I was trying to think of things like alliteration where I was using the R um, from Rosie Bird. And then I'm like, ah, but then I'm, I'm really driving that Rosie Bird name home. Not that that's not my branding, but that's also not my name, right? I never did introduce myself at the top. My name is Tyler. <laughs> Four minutes in. People who don't want to be here are already gone. But my real ones, they're here. And um, I think that's pretty much it. I just wanted to get all that out of the way. That was my housekeeping. Now I'm going to tell you what's on the docket for this episode. I don't really have an all-encompassing discussion to go over today. I wish I did, but I just, I don't. We're just going to talk about a couple of my favorites, and that is The Kiss Pet and The Mafia Nanny, because I've talked about The Mafia Nanny even here on the podcast a little bit, but I haven't like gone into the plot or talked about what's going on in The Mafia Nanny. And honestly, that story is a trip. And I want to talk about it. So we're going to we're gonna do a little bit of, little bit of chit-chatting about the Mafia Nanny today. So if you're a fan of those two, stick around. If you're a fan of one of those, skip to wherever I talk about the one you're a fan of. Feel free. I'm giving you permission. You can skip the other conversation. I don't care. <laughs> okay. Let's start with the kiss bet. Because last time I talked about the kiss bet and where we left off when Sarah Lynn and Oliver were having their sick day together... That was a time. 
um, it was a time and it was a dark time because what happened when I was talking about the sick day episodes was I was fast passing and I had just had my heart stomped on by now free episodes. I think it's like episode 182 and 183. I just had my life ripped apart by those. And I'm sitting here trying to talk optimistically about the sick day between Sarah Lynn and Oliver. But all I could think about is how Oliver just like rejected Sarah Lynn out on the balcony in just the worst, like made her cry. And I just, whew, it was really hard. I could not see the light during that time. So I, it was really bold of me to try and talk about it positively. I don't think I really did. <laughs> It was a time, but I'm here to report that those episodes have become free. We're going to go through them. And also I do fast pass, like I just said. So the light is at the end of the tunnel, you guys. I think, I think I see it. I swear to God, if it gets pulled away from me, I am rioting in the streets. You're going to see me in front of my house. No one's actually going to see me. I live in the middle of nowhere, but maybe someone will. And because I live in the middle of nowhere, they'll think I'm a witch and they'll stone me. So don't get me stoned, the kiss bet, okay? It's 420, but that's not what I'm talking about. I, I mean, people will throw rocks at me, maybe, because I'm being weird in the streets. So don't do that to me, the kiss bet. Let's get on with it. So where we left off last time was when I do believe Sarah was, like, falling asleep. And Oliver was kind of just next to her. And she's like, don't look at me. <laughs> And um, and then he, they have the whole moment where he's like, I'm not trying anything. Like, just calm the hell down. Stop it. Your fever's talking. No. And then Sarah takes that as Oliver hates me. And I was like, Oliver doesn't hate you. He's just stupid. He's really smart, but he's stupid. You're all stupid because you're kids. And you drive me bananas. And I don't know why I read this comic. <laughs> I love talking about this. I'm like, I love this. It's my favorite story. And then I, I go to talk about it and I'm like, I want everyone in this story to go to the moon. <laughs> like, I want to punt them to the moon lovingly with love. <laughs> I can't even take myself seriously. Sarah and Oliver are, uh, oh God, they drive me crazy. So they're, they're, in, they're, in their sick, they're in their sick era right now. And of course, this starts happening. Like I said, Oliver's like, don't let your fever start talking. Okay, girl, calm down. Let me slap this wet rag on your face again. And uh, and Sarah is just like, okay, all right. It seems like you're falling asleep. And Oliver's like, no, no, I'm not falling asleep. And then they do. They fall asleep together on the couch. And it's beautiful. ASMR. I love it. And it was probably one of the most wholesome Sarah and Oliver moments, dare I say, ever. I just, there was a lot of tenderness there with Oliver taking care of her. You can tell it's clearly his natural instinct, which drives me bonkers because I'm like, boy, you're taking care of that woman, that girl, like she is your everything. So maybe stop pretending like she's not your everything. You're driving me up a wall. <laughs> I loved this part though. And it had me so hopeful for the future, even though he like snuck out in the end. Of course he did. I'm sure he woke up and he was just like, whoa, what am I doing? Um, but it had me feeling hopeful, okay? Before I got to the fast pass and my life was shattered. Oh my goodness. So yeah, Sarah Lynn wakes up and, you know, her dad comes home. He's like, did you have any boys over? And she's like, no, of course not. Meanwhile, her and Oliver were just sleeping on the couch. What I love about the kiss bet is that Sarah Lynn's dad is like the best wingman she has. <laughs> I'm like, I think he wants the ship to happen more than we do. And that's saying a lot. Um, he does like everything in his power to really sell Oliver on Sarah Lynn. Like, girl, why my daughter, my dear, lovely child of mine, why aren't you dating your tutor? <laughs> and I love him for that. He's a 12 out of 10 dad. What's his name? I think it's Richard. Smash. Okay. Vicky comes over. Love that. Love Vicky and Sarah Lynn. Their relationship is so cute. And you need your you need your bestie. Okay. And I also just I love that her bestie is her family. That's always up. It's like um <laughs> I want to talk about Sable Curse so bad. We're gonna save it. I'll talk about it next week. But I just love it when we have two girls. Not that way, but like in a really, I like that way too, but like 
when they love each other as friends and they just have a very nice like girls girls relationship that's inspiring to me so i'm really glad that that vicky does come over however it does result in a whole fiasco because vicky is of course like girl oliver's in love with you <laughs> which she's right all right your honor she's correct she's telling the truth she's not lying but sarah takes that and it's like okay okay um well, does she even... I love how I'm just talking about this. Like, I, I know. I have to kind of look at it again. Yeah, she tells she tells Vicky everything that just happened. And Vicky's like, yeah, he likes you. And he just doesn't want to... Like, he doesn't know how to make a move about it. Um, And Sarah Lynn's like, well, why didn't he just say that us going to his mom's art show was a date then? If he likes me. Like, why are we being this way about it? So valid. I get it. I, Oliver's throwing signals all over the place. None of them make sense. They're pointing every other direction besides where they should be. I don't blame Sarah Lynn for being stressed. I, I, I'm going to reiterate as I keep talking about this series that I think Sarah Lynn's in the right every episode. <laughs> like, I think she's doing great. I think she's handling this like a champ. And I have never loved her character more than I do now. And I've always loved Sarah Lynn's character, but there have been times she's infuriated me. However, in recent episodes, I think she's just, she's doing her best and she's doing a really good job because what ultimately happens is that Vicky texts Joe and just flat out asks him, hey, does Oliver have a crush on Sarah Lynn? <laughs> like, why would you text Joe that? Joe, Joe has no tact. Joe doesn't know where he is. He's going to make it so obvious. It's not even going to be funny but sure text your boyfriend vicky you goofball she's just as dumb as joe i guess lovingly anyways i do love that moment because joe's just like sitting next to oliver on the couch and he's like uh vicky's wondering if you have a crush on sarah lynn <laughs> and oliver goes what is this grade school and i'm like yeah it kind of is because you're all babies i'm 30 i'm allowed to say that Let's go to the next episode. <laughs> How many episodes did I fall behind here? Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is going to be a party, you guys. So Oliver naturally tells him, like, don't say anything. And he's like, oh, okay, I can't really just ignore her. And she, he goes, okay, well then should I say no? And Oliver's like, no. And I mean, that just told us everything we needed to know. Obviously. That that was everything we needed to hear. Like, he's in love with her. Duh. Um, even Joe, after this whole debacle happens and Oliver's like, tell her no, no, don't tell her no. Wait, yeah, just say no, because it's that's the answer. And Joe's like, that was obvious, even to me. We love a self-aware king, okay? <laughs> I did not have Joe becoming self-aware on my 2024 bingo card. <laughs> I was like, not Joe recognizing that he is oblivious. I love it what is this is this a fourth wall break it's not but it feels like it could be love it amazing <laughs> um but this all leads to that that fiasco I was talking about so joe and vicky get it in their heads that they're going to lock oliver and sarah lynn out on their balconies and like make them talk and in a perfect world where these two goofy dumb kids weren't goofy and dumb that might have worked but actually uh, where one of these kids wasn't dumb <laughs> i'm sorry oliver i love you but child Whew. um that would have worked it just does it it really backfires though it backfires on everybody it backfires on sarah god oliver just he really fumbles <laughs> like like if this was football i don't know anything about football he would fumble that's all i've got and it just it wasn't good okay oliver was a mess in this whole scenario they're out there and sarah's like hey listen like i gotta i gotta tell you something she just says about earlier and and he goes no no don't say it like in his mind he's, he's like no don't say it because he knows or he suspects that she's going to confess to him which i i think she kind of is inching towards that in a way and Oh, wait, I guess they hadn't locked themselves out on the balcony yet. This was just Vicky walks out and she's like, hey, Oliver responded or, or Joe responded. 
she he says Oliver's asleep. So we just made it really awkward. Okay, now Joe is making it obvious that Oliver knows that he asked and Sarah and Vicky are out on the balcony and they're just like looking at Oliver in the eyes. I forgot that that happened. I thought they'd already been locked out on the balcony. Um, no, what happens first is Vicky comes out, makes everything really awkward, and then she locks her on the balcony. <laughs> oh, God, what a mess. Okay, so they're locked. And then he asks her, what did you want to talk about? This is where, this is where he loses me, okay? Like, I was in your corner, Oliver. I was understanding of what you were going through, of your concerns, um, your lack of wanting to jump into a relationship at your age. I get it. I'm in your corner. I feel you. This is where he lost me because he asks her, what did you want to talk about? Even though he knew, he could feel it, he could sense it, that likely what she wanted to talk about were her romantic feelings for him. He knows. He could feel it in his guts. He could feel it in his little Oliver Bones. That, that is what she's going to say. But he still pushes her to tell him what she was going to talk about. She does she does her best too. She's like, it wasn't a big deal. And he's like, I don't know, it sounds like it was a pretty big deal. And she goes, Really, you don't want to hear what I have to say. And he's like, No, you I do. But he doesn't, okay? She knows. She's reading him like a book because Sarah Lynn is very intuitive when it comes to Oliver. They do actually belong together, like they're doing great. But she knows not to, like, she's like, this isn't the best time. Like, this is not the time telling you that I have a crush on you. It's just not good. And Oliver pushes it out of her. He makes her, essentially. And he doesn't even, like, get it out of her all the way. She's just like, why are you trying so hard to get me to say it? Like, you're really upset. I don't want to say it. And he's like, I'm not upset. And then he follows this all up by saying, I don't want to be, I don't need any distractions right now. And neither do you. There's too many things on the line. I just want to set things clear between us. Sarah Lynn, you and I, we should aim to maintain a professional relationship from here on out. Tutor and student. And nothing more beyond that. He started to lose me and then he just dropped me off a goddamn cliff. <laughs> I was like, Oliver, what the actual... Why? <laughs> Why would you say that? I, oh my god, poor Sarah. Her face, her face, it actually made me very emotional. I felt so bad. The drawing, the style is, is, even though I didn't like what was happening, I could, I mean, you could kind of see it coming. Um, that's not a, that's not a slight against the artwork or the story because this is like very well done. <laughs> Like, I felt so bad for Sarah in that moment. He goes, I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. I didn't mean to do any of that. When I read that for the first time, yo, I wanted to jump into that story and just slap Oliver silly. Probably would have gone to jail. I wouldn't have hurt him. It would have been like light slaps. But like a slap, you know? Not enough to cause problems, just enough to irritate him. Like maybe I would have slapped him with like a feather duster or something. I don't know, just something, just something, just something to, some clarity. I don't know, he's driving me crazy. But he keeps apologizing and she says, is that really how you feel? Mm, she starts crying. I would too. I was probably. Me, a 30-year-old woman crying in my house because Oliver's being a butt. <laughs> he goes, it doesn't really matter how I feel, Sarah Lynn. I'm just trying to look out for you. And I feel bad in this moment because I think if Sarah was obviously not as emotional, but can you blame her? Like, of course, she's going to be emotional. This is like a bombshell. If she wasn't as emotional, I wonder if she could have been able to see through the lines of this a little more and be like, okay, he does have feelings, but he's just like being weird about it all. But I just, I love her response to this. The way she stood up for herself and the way that she took on this whole stupid speech Oliver just did was 12 out of 10. Incredible. You go girl, Sarah Lynn. I wish I was there to give her a hug and a high five because holy crap. She goes, that's what you want to reduce our entire relationship and friendship to just a student and tutor dynamic. And it, and then he brings it up. He keeps going. He goes, that's why I think relationships beyond that are inconvenient. 
I've been telling you all along how I feel about the idea of relationships and dating in high school since the beginning. They lead to heartbreak and disappointment. It never ends well. Sarah here at this point is just like dating. I didn't say anything about dating and she hasn't. She hasn't even confessed to him. She just essentially was like, why are you pushing me so hard to say what I need to say? Like, this isn't the good, this isn't the good time to do it. Like, yeah, she's kind of alluding, but he's picking this up and throwing it at her. Like, how dare you talk about dating to me? And meanwhile, he's the one who's bringing it up. Like, she didn't bring up any of this. She didn't say, Oliver, I love you. I have feelings for you. Let's date. In fact, she was like, I don't want to tell you anything right now. And he still pushes for it and then pulls this stunt. Are you kidding me? Oh my God. I love I'm so heated over these fictional children. That's just, this is, this is what my life has become. I just, I'm really proud of her. She lets him know, like, you didn't even hear what I had to say. You pressured me into telling you my feelings when I wasn't ready. And you still brought up the subject of dating even without knowing, like, without knowing what I was going to say, just so you could reject me. Yes, Sarah, keep going. Go, you are, mm. I told you I wasn't ready to have this conversation. The last thing I want to do is inconvenience you or make you feel uncomfortable. That's why I didn't want to share my feelings with you. And Oliver stands there like a total dingus, like, oh shit. And she's crying. Like, maybe this is called introspection, Oliver. Okay, think about it. You didn't want to hurt her, and now you just did. <laughs> you hurt her bad. Oh. Why am I so mad? <laughs> oh my god, I love this. I just love her. She was so perfect. She's like, fine, if that's all you want is a student and, and tutor, really, that's what we'll have. Good. What, it'll work. Whatever. And, you know, Vicky finally lets her in. Oliver is dumbfounded. And honestly, he deserves to be dumbfounded for, like, at least five more episodes. <laughs> Because what a fumble. Uh, Vicky does let her in though. And and she looks at Oliver with like, just like side eye. Honestly, if that was me going back to my high school days, I was such, I don't even think I was like a good friend. I was just like a messy. I mean, maybe I was a good friend, but like I was the type of person who, if you hurt my best friend in that way, <laughs> like I would shoot off a Facebook message to you about how you were the biggest piece of trash. <laughs> So the fact that Vicky just looked at him, I mean, I probably would have got off <laughs> like a real, I just, I was a problem maybe, but I would have yelled at him in that moment. I would have been like, what the f did you do? <laughs> Seriously, blondie, what are you doing? Go ride the subway. Think about what you did. And even Oliver, so now he's sulking on the balcony by himself, thinking about how she was crying. And he was like, oh my God, she actually does have feelings for me. I didn't even mean what I just said. That's just kind of what came out. And then he somehow gets to the end of this and goes, you know what? It's fine. I couldn't, I can't give her what she deserves anyways. It's necessary. This isn't what I had in mind, but this way there won't be any confusion. And I'm like, um, no, <laughs> there is a, there's going to be a lot more confusion coming your way, boy. Yeah. But then I'm glad Vicky was there though. I mean, she kind of caused this, but at least then they, they got to have their moment where she was able to con comfort Sarah Lynn. That brought me some joy. I mean, not really, because Sarah is really upset. She's sobbing. I feel so bad. Oh my god. And in the upcoming episodes, too, I spent a lot of time yelling about Oliver, so I will- I'm not gonna breeze past him so much, but kind of, a little bit. I'm gonna breeze past a little bit of it. Like, in the upcoming episodes, of course, she's telling everybody what happened. Uh, everybody being Patrick, Rose, Joe, it, Lulu, for some reason, they're running track. And everyone's kind of just telling her, it, he sucks. You know, you could do better, Sarah Lynn. And then the one who seems to have the most shining bit of, oh, I forgot Tammy's there. Tammy's there too. Tammy's kind of like, no, he loves you. <laughs> because I, it, Tammy's right, but she's also delusional. But in this sense, she's right. So good for her. Um, but the one that actually comes through and like gives Sarah Lynn the information she seems to be craving is Lulu, which is wild. <laughs> to me but this is what she says to her she goes i would focus on focusing on being focused on the things you should be focused about <laughs> what i'm hanging that on my wall i think that that's gonna be my ma like my mantra from now on i'm just gonna be like have i focused on focusing on being focused on the things that i should be focused about though like because i think i should try that it it worked for Sarah Lynn. She was like, you know what? You're right. Let's go. What's coming up next now is, of course, and we get a little bit of it. How much do we get? Where are we? 
I think, okay, two more episodes I could talk about and then it's fast pass. So we're coming up on them meeting for a tutoring session after this whole ordeal went down. And we do get a flashback to Oliver thinking about what just kind of transpired out on the balcony. And he's like, oof, should I go over there and talk to her? I messed up. Oh no, in the end, like I did make her cry. Um, Obviously he chooses not to. He just goes to bed. And then he has a moment with that little piggy that she won for him at the arcade. And the piggy's like, go apologize to my mom. And I'm like, you guys are such a cute little high school couple. They have a stuffed animal that's their child. I totally did that with my husband when we were in high school and we were boyfriend and girlfriend. Like a total weirdo. I love them. Why aren't they dating? Onward. He has a whole moment. Joe's like, what are you doing? Sorry, you know, whatever. Um, (laughs) But now they're going to have, they're going to tutor. They're going to do some tutoring, okay? And Oliver cannot focus on tutoring at all. He's literally making a pros and cons list of apologizing to Sarah Lynn. Like, okay, well, if I if I do, the pros would be that she won't be mad at me. We could still be friends. And then he wrote girlfriend beside it and crossed it out. And I was like, Oliver, you little sneaky. I don't know. Somebody who really doesn't like to think about dating. Interesting that you wrote girlfriend and then crossed it out. Interesting. Your brain wrote girlfriend. Okay interesting and then another pro was that they could finish their song listen sarah's a she's loyal as heck she's gonna finish the song the cons sarah lynn might be mad i think she's gonna be bad yeah i don't think that's a might my boy i might catch feelings and then he put more at least he's able to admit that he has feelings and he might get more of them um distractions for sarah lynn which would cause her to fail And then heartbreak. Twice. He's really worried about heartbreak. But like, does he not realize he just broke her heart? (laughs) Like, that already happened, my guy. (laughs) Whatever. He can't focus on math. He's like, what is math? The the turntables, okay? He doesn't, he can't focus on shit. Like, my feelings are completely out of control. I feel unstable, vulnerable, and weak, maybe? And then he goes, is this a weakness? I'm a weakling. Yeah, you're weak for Sarah, okay, Oliver? Sarah's trying to figure out what's going on. Oliver's like, what is math? She's like, seriously, can you please tell me about the Taylor series expansion of a function? Which, what the hell is that? Oh my god, I've never used that. I'm so sorry to you high school students. What is that? I don't... It's never been a part of my life in adulthood. If I learned about it, it has waved bye-bye years ago. (laughs) I don't know what that is. Um... Uh, but Oliver also doesn't. At least not in this moment. He's too focused on his girl in front of him, upset. He he g- does go to apologize to Sarah Lynn. And she's like, okay. And he goes, um, I, I, like, I'm sorry. I was out of line. I, w- I may have gone overboard. I'm sorry. And Sarah's just like, okay, that's fine. Can you please tell me about math? <laughs> and Oliver, oh my god, he is shook. He's like, is that really all you have to say? I said, I'm sorry. And she goes, I forgive you. Can we move on now? And I'm like, yes, Sarah. You make him work for it, okay? He just fumbled so hard. He deserves to sweat. He deserves to sit there and sweat and try to make it up to you. (laughs) Take notes, everybody out there. She's handling this correctly. And yeah. Oh yeah, he's imagining. He's like, what what was I expecting? Did I think she was going to like run over to me and hug me and be like, I forgive you. Thank you. (laughs) And, um, yeah, he just, he's like, ah, I gotta go, bye, and runs away. Because he's too stressed to deal with this right now. He can't think straight. And that's where we leave off. I can't read anymore because it's fast pass. I mean, I have read it. And like I said, there is a light at the end of the tunnel, I think. (sighs) He deserves to sweat, though. I hope he does for a few more episodes. I I would love to see them like actually come together and have a nice moment of course i i think we deserve that much in the next like in the near future but in this exact moment after everything that has transpired i mean oliver deserves to just have to sit there and be like oh my god i really messed up because he did he was so worried about hurting her and in the process he hurt her more than you could even like i just oliver come on are there any other old people out there who are reading the kiss bite with me and angry? 
who are stressed. Like, do they also give you indigestion? Because sometimes I'm like, is that heartburn or did I just read the kiss bed? It's both, I guess. Okay, let's wrap this up with the mafia nanny. Honestly, I've been recording for 35 minutes. I didn't think I was going to yell about the kiss bed that much. <laughs> but I do want to talk about the mafia nanny, at least a little bit about the most recent arc, because if you're, I mean, this is obviously for people who are reading it, if you're kind of like caught up with it, like me, um, I think we'll start roughly where Gabriel asked Davina for help to find somebody, and that somebody is his cousin, and it's under like the guys that Davina thinks that maybe he's going to help him or do something for him or whatever, and um, so she, she complies, she finds Gabriel's cousin but what was actually happening was that Gabriel's uncle wanted his cousin whacked (laughs) and yeah that happens this was a turning point for the series for me and that's why I wanted to talk about it and like because this the mafia nanny makes me laugh a lot which was unexpected for me but I even included it in my funny webtoon series video because it makes me laugh genuinely (laughs) And then in this most recent arc, this guy dies. <laughs> like they kill him in a shed. And then they call this doctor whose entire job is just to torture people to death. I actually kind of felt sick after this episode because essentially, I guess trigger warning, if you don't like talk about stuff, to skip a few like 30, 45 seconds. But what happens is they get this guy in a shed and there's this infamous doctor who's a part of their mob who I guess her entire job is to just torture people to death. That's what she does. She comes in with all of her tools and she just messes with them until they die. And I, I, that's a lot. I was like, is that really, I don't think that's how the mafia, I mean, I've watched the Sopranos. That's all I know. And I'm like, I don't think they really play with you that much. I think they just kind of like throw you in the ocean, but you know, I guess that's what they do in this mafia. Um, and it made, it really did. It made me feel kind of sick. But we saw this soft side of Gabriel in this moment too. And that's another reason it was kind of like a turning point for me. Because it's all sort of revving up to this idea that Gabriel obviously doesn't want his son Mikey to be a part of the mafia. And like he's trying his best to shield him from this life. And I think he, he can't say it out loud, but he like obviously secretly hopes he will be able to get away from it. And not actually be a part of it. I have a lot of questions when it comes to Gabriel and the Angelini Mafia. And like, if he does actually know like what went down with Davina's family. Like, if he knows who Davina is and that she comes from the background or not. I'm so curious. I'm so curious. I'm curious what you guys think. Like, do you think he knows something and he's just... Because why did he pick her, right? That doesn't really have anything to do with what I was talking about. But essentially, we have this moment of softness from Gabriel because when they catch his cousin and they drag him into this shed to be tortured, Gabriel injects him with something that I think is kind of like a poison that's going to give him a uh, pain, like a, a painless, you know, like, it, like a quick and easy go. And on one hand, you see that and you're like, oh my god, he just killed that man. But when it comes to the line of work he's in, he was really, he was nice about it, you know? He didn't want him to suffer. (laughs) So, I don't even know how to, I, I love how I'm sitting here like, he's so nice for that. For injecting him with poison. Lethally injecting him. He's such a good guy. <laughs> but he did it so that the doctor couldn't torture him. I don't know. That that episode just blew my mind, though. I was not anticipating that. The, I just... And the doctor was so mad, too, because the guy died really fast. And she was like, he didn't even last, like, two minutes or whatever. And I'm like, you're gross. <laughs> like, go be normal somewhere. What are you doing? Why is this your life? Um, He clearly has this soft side. I don't know what he's doing in the mafia. This, this man... His poor wife. Who knows what happened to her? Do we think his wife was really kidnapped, by the way, or killed or whatever? Was she a good person? What do we think? What's the consensus? Part of me wants to think she wasn't a good person. Don't ask me why. I just... 
maybe it it helps with the idea that they're throwing romance into this for some reason because obviously that's that's kind of the end game is that they're hoping we're, we're hoping for Davina and Gabriel to be like a thing but I'm confused like Gabriel has this son his wife was killed doesn't seem like it was that long ago and meanwhile Davina's like 19 or 20 or something I'm just like this is weird because Gabriel looks like he's 40. I mean, he's really hot, but I don't know. What the takeaway was from this whole moment was um, Davina discovering that that's what happened. Like, she recognized that she found this man for Gabriel so that they could get the guy and kill him. And it made her sick, which is valid. She didn't think that that's what she was doing, which I don't know why she didn't see that coming. But you know, there's no way for her to know if he was a good or a bad guy or what happened. No one wants to feel like they're responsible for ending somebody's life, especially if you don't know anything about them. But I think even if you do, if you are a person with good morals, you don't really want to feel responsible for ending anybody's life regardless. Um, so, yeah, she's stressed. Um, she actually does try to call her headmistress and the her nanny who raised her essentially after her parents died to be like, I think I need to stop. I need to quit. <laughs> and um, I can't think of, oh, I think it says the girl's name, the older nanny lady mrs bremerton okay she calls her and she's like i think i'm contributing to like the bad side of, the, of things over here i don't like i don't think i can do this and her, her guardian mrs bremerton is like well you know it's kind of it's tough to do that but like if you need to come home you can just come home and i thought that was really sweet like you can really tell that she sees her as more than just the child she nannied like that she raised Davina it's kind of like her daughter I would say at this point after so many years and um I don't know that in like this really intense moment and some guy just died in a shed uh, having that phone call with this guardian of hers like this mother figure and her being like all that matters is if you don't want to be there like we get you home <laughs> I don't know it, it, warmed my heart a little bit in these trying times and she kind of ultimately decides that she'll she's just gonna think about it like I'll I'll let you know tomorrow basically it's so sad though she's like we miss you around here and she starts crying um but anyways there's like a big party happening in the most recent episodes for Gabriel's birthday Mr. Angelini and I think it's really funny because they basically are like Davina you need to like stop looking like we overwork you even though we do you gotta look hot here's a dress all right get out there stun everybody <laughs> which i was like what's happening this is again where i i know i saw uh, my friend Asel. they were saying on their instagram story somewhere and i think some of this might have even just been like a little bit of a joke like give gabriel to me why are we doing a romance here but it does feel weird that there's like a romance here but this is where it kind of starts to shine or in these most recent episodes because they they get Davina looking hot, all right, and they throw her into this party. <laughs> and they're like, it's fine. That's the nanny. But she can't be the nanny. So uh, their excuse for having her at the party is that they need her for security reasons. I don't know. I just feel bad for Davina. So now she's literally at this party. Mind you, last time she was at a mafia party, the house burned down and her parents died. <laughs> So this isn't really her scene, okay? She doesn't want to be here. I think what sucks is that she's becoming really close with Mikey. So she starts to feel like she's betraying Mikey by wanting to quit. And I, I know ultimately it's probably going to come down to she doesn't want to leave Mikey behind. Um, to abandon him when she knows she can help. This is just my guess. I don't think that... This hasn't happened yet. And also, I don't fast pass the Mafia and Annie, so I don't know. Um, I just think that might be where this is going. Ugh, I just feel so bad when she has to put on a dress and, you know, go to a party. But this is... 
<laughs> the reason I wanted to talk about this, oh my god, you guys, I was dying. <laughs> so, it's Kay's birthday, he's standing in a corner, he's talking to his uncle, <laughs> the Don, like, the, the mafioso, the man in charge, and this guy's sitting here holding this martini glass with, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's gotta be at least like five more back. There are 14 olives in it. And I don't know, maybe a half a ounce of vodka. There, there's no way. <laughs> is that what a martini is? What is a martini? This is important. Gin. Okay, well, whatever. It's a drink with, it, there's like literally, a like I could spit in that cup and that would be about as much liquid as is in his martini glass. Otherwise it is just purely olives. <laughs> And I couldn't breathe when I was reading this episode because he's just sitting there so seriously. He's like the man we're supposed to fear and he's holding a glass with 99% olives. What's interesting here, to deviate from the olives, even though I think those are the most important part of the story, is that Gabriel like motions to Davina that he doesn't want his uncle to know like where she came from, like the academy she came from or like how she, he found her or anything, which interesting, very fascinating to me that he like makes it a point to be like, do not tell him where you come from. Um, Davina gets the hint. She's smart. She's classy. She knows what's up and doesn't tell him. He's like, wouldn't be very elite if I told you. Touche. I don't know. Then he's sucking back some olives. Important. If I'm feeling up to the editing, I will put in a picture of this man and all of his olives. <laughs> Because I don't know what he was doing. I was like, sir, to be fair, that is how I would also take a martini. You could just skip the drink. Just give me a jar of olives. Like, honestly, at this point, they should just give this man a bucket of olives and let him wander around the party with it. Because that is clearly his only goal. He's talking to her. He's impressed. He's like, okay. Impressive lady. Very pretty. And then... <laughs> Gabriel gives her this smile and I think it's supposed to be like endearing and cute. But he looks so weird to me. He's just like, and I'm like, you don't make that face. What are you doing? Stop it. Again, I feel like I have to put it in. Guys, I lost it. I couldn't breathe for this episode. I was literally crying. And then he's literally all at the same time. So Gabriel's making this weird ass face of like, and then um, his uncle is ordering another martini with triple the olives. <laughs> I can't make this shit up. And, um... <laughs> I don't know why Davina blushes about this. She, like, looks away like she's angry. And then Gabriel's like, why is she, why is she angry at me? And I'm like, well, I don't know. Probably because you just killed the man that she was forced to find for you. <laughs> Back to Olive Guy, though. Davina runs away. Gabriel's like, no! Um, but she already did. And don't worry. <laughs> Pert little thing, isn't she? Not as worldly as your usual associate associates, the uncle says about Davina. <laughs> While you get a parting glance of his new martini glass that is literally overflowing with olives. <laughs> if you've ever seen Napoleon Dynamite, there's a scene where Napoleon calls Kip from school and he's like, hey, you come pick me up. My lips hurt real bad. And Kip's like, no, I'm busy. And it just keeps panning to Kip. And he just has a plate of nachos behind him. And it's a bunch of tortilla chips and just a pile of cheese. And the way that they shot Napoleon Dynamite was so ridiculous. Like, it was so low budget that I, I think at a certain point some of this was on purpose. But every time it cuts to Kip sitting in front of his nachos, the pile of cheese on top of the nachos is a different height. <laughs> And during one of the takes, when it goes to Kip, he's like on the phone and he's like looking over his shoulder at the nachos. <laughs> There's just like a mountain of cheese. And it's only in that one take. <laughs> but it was like they grated the entire block of cheese on top of these nachos. This is so funny to me. <laughs> it's been like... 20 years and it's still funny to me i don't know there's something wrong with my brain but it was so funny and that's what this olive glass is giving to me okay it's like this this box <laughs> this plate of nachos with a bunch of cheese on top and it's just this glass with like 50 olives in it 
Again, just give the man a jar of olives. Why are we even going on with this charade? You're the king of the mafia. Who gives a shit? Just carry around your olives and have a grand old time. Why are you, why are you putting them in a puny martini glass for this facade, okay? We, we get it. You like olives. Someone was commenting. They're like, this is ironic because that's an extra dirty martini. And he's the dirtiest man of all. And I was like... Oh, is that what that was supposed to be? Because I can't stop clowning about how this man has a fucking addiction to olives. <laughs> like they're trying to be clever with the writing, and I'm just like, what's up with this man and all of his olives? <laughs> Point of all this is, Davina's upset. She's wrestling with her job. She doesn't really want to keep it. Um, Gabriel does find her, okay? And a lot transpires in the most recent episode uh, that was free. And they do make her, like, attend the dinner and everything. Mike, he's like, we're at the kids' table. You can't come to the kids' table, Davina. And she's like, uh, I suppose. And then she hears, I'll take you in. And it's Gabriel. And he's like, I'll take you in. She's like, I can't come in. It, it, it's your birthday. Like, what are you, you're going to bring me in? And he's like, um, then I surely get to choose whom I escort to dinner with his arm out. At least he doesn't do that weird derpy smile. That freaks me out. <laughs> I was like, bro, don't make that face ever again. That is the weirdest face you could have ever made. I don't like it. <laughs> Get that face away from me, Gabriel. You did well with my uncle. He's not an easy man to charm. I'd seat you next to me, but Val put a lot of thought into the place cards. Oh, see this part too. It's like sent chills down my spine. Not in a romantic way. She goes, I'm surprised to be invited in the first place. And Gabriel goes, of course you're invited. You're a part of the family now. Something tells me she doesn't really want to be a part of the family, so I don't think she's taking that the way that he probably hopes she's taking that. <laughs> she's, like, literally wrestling with the concept of keeping her job. And he's like, you're a part of my family. And she's like, I killed a man. <laughs> I just wanted to know what happened to my parents. She's in too deep, folks. God, these are really long episodes. If you haven't noticed that, the Mafia Nanny has, like, long episodes i hope they have a good team working on it so that it's not just like one poor soul being overworked because holy shit <laughs> they're really long episodes and the artwork seems kind of intricate so <laughs> i like this part too she's talking to one of the family members and he goes you can relax darling no one is paying attention to you and then he's like except for Gab gabriel <laughs> and he's like death glaring at davina i'm like bro you have got to control your faces <laughs> He's making so many faces. It's a lot. I can't tell if he's interested or pissed off. Probably both. She takes Mikey to bed. Takes care of him. Says this weird thing in her brain like, it might be my last morning with him after all. You know, she's really, she's really thinking about getting out of there. But, oh, and it's so cute when Mikey goes to sleep. He goes, night, Vina. He calls her Vina. Gave her a nickname. You can't leave that child. He loves you, Davina. Okay. It was hard for Mikey to open up. So she says goodbye, Mikey, when she closes the door. Mistake, because Gabriel's behind her. And he's like, something's wrong. You've been nervous all evening. Everyone else noticed too. You gotta stop it. You're making us look weak. And this is when she confronts him. She's just like, you lied to me. I know what you did to your cousin. And I like how Gabriel responds to this too. He's like, yeah, I get it. It's fine. I didn't lie to you. You weren't trying to help that man. And then he goes, I never said I was. And she goes, you said. He goes, I just said he was in danger. <laughs> and that's true. That is what he said. <laughs> Actually, this is this is a really, uh, this is bad. See, the reason that they even had to get this guy right away and like kill him was because Davina was poking around in in their like cyber world. And the uncle and everyone caught on and... Gabriel even admits it here, too. He's like, I'm being monitored. And then she's like, oh, shit, the mirror software. It wasn't watching me. It's supposed to be monitoring Gabriel. And then it's just like it all dawns on her. She realizes this is her fault, sort of. But the episode ends with her being like, I didn't mean to. And Gabriel's like, I know. But you can't have it both ways. First you demand access, then you don't want to be involved. Either I shield information from you or I don't. In or out, which will it be? And that's where we leave off. So this is obviously a big point for the series because, I mean, unless the series is going to end next week, which I'm pretty sure it's not, my guess is she's going to be in um, and things are just going to keep getting crazier. Maybe she'll kill more people. Unintentionally. <laughs> um, 
yeah, that was this episode. I hope you had fun. I thought it was going to be more relaxing than it was. I spent a lot of time yelling, but I had a good time and I'm glad I did this. And I'm going to do my best to come back and do it again next week. Probably going to talk about Sable Curse because, oh, that baby's going on hiatus for at least all of May, possibly some of June, because the creator, Little Melon, is getting married. And I'm going to need somebody to console me. But like, I, I mean, that with love, she deserves a break and she deserves to get married. Okay, I'm not, I'm not begging for Sable Curse to come back. That's just me saying it's going to be on hiatus. So I'm going to need to like occupy myself. I'll probably get some work done, honestly. Because <laughs> I won't have Sable Curse to like wildly distract me. Or I'll just be more distracted than ever because I'll be trying so hard to get through the hiatus. But I'm excited for uh, what's to come and what I can talk about in Sable Curse. And I will probably be doing that in the next episode be it next week or a couple weeks from now, whenever I do sit down and record. I hope you had a really good time. Hope you had fun sitting with me, hanging out. I hope you had some tea or a drink or a snack or something. And yeah, thank you so much for hanging out. I hope you will subscribe and like this video. I'm gonna try and get some actual content done this week. That isn't one of these, but like real content. And I hope I will see you again in the next one. Bye.